Oh, Foot Clan, we got a good show for you today. We are in true off-season form where we make a lot of sense. We're going to talk about all the wide receivers that really matter, not the studs that we all know to draft, but the teams where it's like, okay, th this team has two good wide receivers. What are their situations like next year? What were they like? What's the truth about this past season? We're going to dive into all of it for you. Leave your comments on who you're looking forward to drafting next year and enjoy. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome, man. Tuesday, February 7th, the Fantasy Footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason, back. Chillo. <laughs> oh, we are so uh, dumb. <laughs> I, 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 for some reason in my mind, I'm just imagining I'm sitting down for like an interview or something. Mm. I'm going to interview somebody for a job at like a coffee shop, and the gentleman sits down. <laughs> And he and he says hello that way, and I would just turn around, and walk yeah. out. Just, hello, well, chill we out. are done here. Yes, uh, you're not quite what we're looking for. Chubby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome in, one and all. Super Bowl week. Uh, what'd you gentlemen do with your lack of football this past weekend? That was a a strange occurrence. We didn't have any football to watch. Uh, I mean, I, I guess Pro Bowl games. Yeah, which we I didn't have any football to watch. Yeah, I was at the Super Bowl experience, so I missed all of the Pro Bowl stuff on the television. And then Saturday, I coached my son's game, so it's still football nonstop for me. I heard you kicked a mean twenty-five yard field goal. I did after I can, waiting two and a half hours in line to do so. That was not an exaggeration <laughs> of how long I had to wait. And that is the NFL experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, waiting. Yeah, Super Bowl out here. We'll, Look, if, we'll if be we, at the game. If we could just get rid of people. It would make it easier. It, like, the experience would be top notch. I can tell you right now. It's ruined by the, by the people, though. I am very much looking forward <laughs> to the opportunity to go to the Super Bowl this year, which we're going to do. However, my brain does not compute how I get from my house to that <laughs> Super Bowl. Yeah. I do not comprehend how one gets right. in the building. How do you possibly know? How do you get close to the building? Yeah, I'm like, is there, are there zip lines? Do my, you go to like a, a tower? Like, yeah. how do you get to the actual? Well, I think you have to walk. They have shut or down parachute. the city. Uh, <laughs> all the streets will be closed. So maybe closed a bicycle, for the Super Bowl. <laughs> closed for the Super Bowl. <laughs> so you just bicycle. Like I, I, I know we talked. We we're like, well, well, Uber to get dropped off at the game. Yeah, they. The but like, roads how, closed. How, these Uber drivers aren't going to know what to do. No, they're not trained in this. No yeah, one is. Yeah, because it's not like they. They're used to this event. You know, it's not like, oh, I do this every Sunday. No, they'll be just like me driving. So I don't know what the difference would be. But we're going to try to get there <laughs> at some point. I imagine security at the Super Bowl has got to be out outrageous. I hope so. Like full body, <laughs> yeah, full body scans and crevice tests. Oh, hello. I hope so. <laughs> Wide receiver truth episode part two today. Uh, speaking of Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Why you gotta do that? Uh, to one up you with yeah, a real like, trumpet. My horn was pretty good. Yours was pretty good, but I can only make one horn sound at a time. This announcement, pretty great. Yeah, the 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit presale starts as always on Super Bowl Sunday, and we're so excited. Uh, our team has been hard at work preparing. Some of the stuff that you'll get access to immediately. Like if you get the UDK Plus, you're going to get access to the Dynasty Pass right away. That's rookie startup rankings, rookie and startup rankings, the rookie mock drafts, Dynasty trade targets, production profiles, team opportunity pages. We're bringing all of that to the app right away. No more waiting till June 1st to get yep, for access the first to time that. ever. Yeah, first time ever. And um, it's the lowest price you can get on the UDK. You know, people come back year after year. The Ultimate Draft Kit is a key part of that offseason plan, and 
It and is. so we're we're giving away a listener league spot if you get it right away. Ooh, yeah, I mean, cello. <laughs> that is the that's you're, you buried the lead. Yeah. Right. I mean, we are giving away a listener league spot. People are always like, ah, oh, I want in. The real, all the emphysema <laughs> laden yeah. folks are but, like, get, let me yeah, get in. Rah, I want in. Did you just a, take a like a big bite of mucus? Yes. Like, what yes, happened that's over what I there? Did. I was like, hmm, <laughs> that looks good. Is that mucus? Let me let me chow down yep, on some little was. yogurt yeah. cup. Yep. yep. Oh, that doesn't go down well. Um, <laughs> but yes, we are giving away a listener league spot. People are often, you know, they want in. They don't know how. They they're like, I don't have something to wow you with. Well, it, it, all you have to do is what you were already, already going to do anyways. If you're going to get the Ultimate Draft Kit, pre-order it on Super Bowl Sunday. You're automatically entered to be in the league with us next year. You're also getting the lowest possible price. If you pre-order, you're getting $5 to shopballers.com plus $10 gift card to fantasychamps.com. Yeah, and we've made no adjustments for inflation. Not for the, yet. It, Someday. It's the same price it's always been. And uh, I need to talk to our money people about this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough. It's tough. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com, Super Bowl Sunday. It's going to be fun. And uh, the team is, they're hard at work. Yeah, very excited for the Dino Pass. All right, we are hopping into some news. News and notes from around the league. The Dino Pass sounds like it has dinosaurs in it. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, Which, you, you, it might. You won't know until you jump in. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, all right. There was uh, a little bit of a story with Joe Mixon over the past few days. He was reported uh, as, you know, that there was a, a warrant out for his arrest for aggravated menacing in, in Cincinnati. The charges were later dropped. They could be refiled at a later date. We're putting it on your radar because it's something, you know, that you need to know happened because we don't know for sure that it's over. Right. All right. The Athletic reporting that Gerald Everett and Keenan Allen. What? Could be cap casualties. No. I, I am just hearing this for the first time. I kind of disconnected for the weekend. Our sweet, sweet Keenan. You got to be kidding me. Can you, Kyle? That yeah, guy I mean, will this be is scooped kind of, up in a heartbeat. This is kind of your dude. I mean, can you picture him in anything other than baby blue and yellow? No, he's my guy, but it's black and red. It's I probably going to happen based on their offseason. So wow. uh, th that puts the Chargers squarely in the find a wide receiver in the draft category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jeremy Fowler writing that Lamar Jackson could be a. I, I love the yeah. language of it. It says could possibly be one hundred million dollars <laughs> apart in contract talks. How far apart are you? Well, could possibly it, be it, it, anywhere from zero to a hundred million. I I know that from the beginning of the contract extension discussions, the Deshaun Watson deal, the fact that Lamar represents himself, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know the resetting of the market that might have transpired with the Watson deal. There has been a large gap. It's been very clear. The team has tried to say the right things. Lamar has say, stayed mostly quiet. But if there is a, a large gap, I mean, let's just, you know, if it's a $50, 75000000 million gap, I don't know if the Ravens are the organization to bend to that amount of money. They should probably, but there are rumors out there that Lamar Jackson could end up with a new home in uh, 2023 yeah it, it's it's a it's a bad situation because of the watson contract where everything's fully guaranteed the that's the money that they're disagreeing on is how much is guaranteed obviously lamar jackson injured this year puts himself in the line of fire as a mobile rushing quarterback so except he wasn't he didn't get hurt on a rush this year no no or I mean, last year or last yeah year. It, uh, every player in the nfl can get injured um on any play doing anything violent uh sport but the point here is is that's where the disagreement is, and I think they're going to end up franchising him. If there's not, you know, there's rumors. Everyone's always, you know, as soon as a report comes out, the teams are far apart. Ooh, trade for Lamar Jackson, trade for Lamar Jackson. I'm sure half the league would love to do that, but I, I expect them to end up franchising him if they're far apart. Well, the thing is, is he could say he's not playing on the tag. Yeah. And put, put them in a corner. I mean, there's several players like that. What the The – once they put like because they will like you as this this is just the way that the NFL works. 
if they're not agreed on contract, you have to put him on the franchise tag to make sure that you get more time to work something out. But that's when the game of chicken starts. Like, because if the way that Lamar has handled his side of this, of saying, you know, when he's cutting off discussions, we're this far apart, the rumors that he wants a fully guaranteed deal like Deshaun Watson, if if they are, if he's really digging into that, I it, it doesn't seem difficult at all to me to say Lamar Jackson is just going to sit out for the year and and force your hand to do something else. This is his big payday, so you yeah. can't you can't necessarily uh, risk yourself to injury. Let, let let's just do the uh, let's play the game temporarily right here. Okay, this moment in time, percentage chance that Lamar Jackson is back in Baltimore based on the information you you have read. Ninety percent. I got it at about 80. Yeah, it's it's still the majority. So I'm, I'm with you, 80 to 85. All right, let's talk about this one. Maybe Brooks has some insight. The Cowboys, they've moved on from Kellen Moore, and they have uh, brought in Brian Schottenheimer as their new <laughs> offensive coordinator. Run, run, run. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> always been the Schottenheimer way. Uh, they, You know, he has been a more uh, rush-forward type of – coach uh, that being said this last year worked with you know he, I think he he showed that he can be the number two to an offensive head coach like he did with the Jacksonville Jaguars this last year and and that's what the Cowboys were looking for someone that could you know run the offense but be not the main guy McCarthy wants to be the 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 main offensive guy in the room that's that's how I'm seeing this situation yeah, well, last last year, to be clear, he was with Dallas as a consultant. So it was the year before, I right. believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so they had some familiarity with him in that offensive system and then moved from consultant into – I mean, it, it kind of speaks to me about what you said, about McCarthy probably wanting a big influence here. And since Schottenheimer was already not calling plays, it wouldn't be too bad for him to just be in the room. I believe I'm looking at it right, but it looks like Schottenheimer has had a top 15 offense as an offensive coordinator two times. Two. Well, out of how many years? I, I, we're looking at like four, 12, 12 okay. years. Yeah, okay, that's a lot. That, of I mean, that's real good. That's good stuff. That's how you win in the NFL, do you? you yeah. Well, bottom, he, bottom half offense. Well, he had all that time with Urban Meyer in Jacksonville, so that was a good experience. Oh, man. No, it's an uninspired hire. Yes. All right. Dallas is is going to be I mean, at a minimum you could you can use this as fuel for look, they pay let's say they pay Tony Pollard. Zeke comes back, they're gonna run the football. I don't know if the decision making process in the offseason was Zeke threw two picks, so we're gonna wreck everything. But it felt that way, right? Like the public persona was Dak screwed it up again. Oh, let's do something to get it out of Dak's hands. Kind of a mess. I mean, the, the Cowboys just didn't play their best football in the playoffs. We've seen their best football a lot, and it was, you know, Super Bowl worthy performances from right. their defense and their offense. But if you have a defense like the one that they do, maybe a, a, a higher running game focus would be beneficial. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. We have the Cardinals still without a head coach as of this recording. We're recording any, Monday. Any moment now. Afternoon. Any moment now. I believe the latest a a team has gone without hiring their head coach when they haven't had one in the offseason was February 11th. But that was due to Josh McDaniels saying, just kidding, oh, leaving the Colts. That was Dumpgate. And then they got Frank. I don't know about Dumpgate. That was a whole different. <laughs> that was Chipotle last week. But um, No, that was the. Yeah. It's due, due to dump game. Yeah, that was dump game. That was Chipotle that year. Frank Reich was the 11th, uh, February 11th was was hired. Um, AJ Green. Goodbye. In the arms of an angel. Goodbye, friend. He made $112 million in 12 years. Oh, nice. It's the third most money of any wide receiver in history. He is retiring. He also was elite. For many, many years. It's this is with Andy. With Andy Dalton. Yeah, this is unfortunately not with me. When he was with me in Arizona, he was not elite. <laughs> the unfortunate part of the NFL is you either go out on top and then there's always the questions of, Oh man, you could have you had so many years left that you could have contributed. Calvin. And it yeah, like yeah, yeah, Calvin Johnson did that move. 
Or you keep playing, and then you become what A.J. Green and Julio Jones are right now, is you forget how great these players were. And, and Julio Jones, A.J. Green were both on top of the NFL at the wide receiver position. And it's just it's how it goes. But So, I mean, it was a really, really, really good career for A.J. Green. Yeah, are you, are you worried about that with your boy Keenan? If he departs, I don't know if we're going to see vintage Keenum again. I mean, he could be a PPR guy for a couple more years. He's only 30, so he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so matter of fact. Sounded like he said Jarvis Landry. Yeah, oh. that's what I heard. Yeah, look at Landry now. Yeah. All right. Uh, any more news to talk about? Any updates on the travel situation to get to the Super Bowl, Brooks? Can you fix that for us? I got nothing for you there. What if, you've, where are the, you've got a ways to get us there. What if we're like the, a like, tunnel system? The do the chopper. chopper. Yeah. yeah. And then, but we obviously we jump out and like parachute down. I would like to, instead of parachute, I'd like to slide down a rope, but I'm going to need some gloves. You want to slide down a rope? I, I think you're letting go of the rope, man. I would not recommend sliding down a rope from that type of a height okay well you do even, it your way even with gloves on i could just see him start the slide and then scream let go and then it's a fall <laughs> yeah i'll have it shoot on as yeah, just in case just you know jic or what about drones can drones drop us off maybe are we I can there hold yet? on to those drones yeah, for a we, long time we, we do we we tested that you had a two minute <laughs> that's right can you get me from here to the super bowl in two minutes <laughs> how fast is this drone yeah speed it up drone <laughs> All right, into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Was it this show or the spitballers where we're talking about banisters? That the spitballers. Yeah, yeah spitballers. Yesterday's episode. Because a banister is like an English lawyer. Something like that. Someone was recommending. But they wear a wig. Yeah, the the banister wig to be part of the wheel of shame next year. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that that makes. If the wheel of sense. shame is there, the banister will be. I'm planning on no cool spins thing. next year. Or the, just the, so the you bar guys know. barrister. Oh, barrister. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, isn't that the thing the, on the side of the stairs? The banister. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounded wrong to me. I was it like, when, sound he, wrong. when were we talking about <laughs> banisters? It sounds really wrong. Well, we were doing some home reno talk, <laughs> right? And we're going to put that on the wheel of shame. All right, put you're the going to have to <laughs> hold a banister. Put a banister you're on there, too. going to look like you're in prison. <laughs> Definitely off-season mode. All right, part two of the wide receiver truth episodes. Uh, last week, we talked about the top ten. Jefferson Cup, Tyreek, Waddle, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and Amari Cooper. Today, we're getting a little deeper. Talking about uh, some names that I think will be very interesting to forecast moving forward. A reminder, when we look at the truth data, we're looking at consistency for a player. How often did they give you a great game? 20 or more points. A good game, 12 points. Bus games, fewer than 8 points. Half PPR scoring. And we don't count missed games against them. Coming in at 11, that would be their fantasy finish. Christian Kirk. Great year. First year in Jacksonville, 11 overall. Consistency rank was 16. A little bit better in the first half of the year, 53% good games. This was the trouble, the 41% bust rate. That's um, you know, that's up there. Uh, but uh, like Mike said, I mean, a pretty good first year. He had uh, a good rapport with Trevor I mean, Lawrence, 84 a, for 1,108. I mean. He was a, like a ninth round fantasy pick. I mean, he would. He was a sensational pick. That yes, the, I agree. The that you're hoping that you don't have that many bust games. Like it, it's great. He he gave you the amount of boom games from a ninth round pick that certainly you're you're very very happy with. Hope that the consistency can balance out for next year. It it's going to be very interesting with the addition of of Calvin Ridley and Zay Jones kind of broke out there and and Evan Ingram. Do they bring him back? So where are you guys feeling about? How are you feeling about Christian Kirk moving forward? I think, uh, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, I, I think that Christian Kirk's probably going to be a value next year because of the additions that will happen. I, I assume Evan Ingram will be back, but with Calvin Ridley in tow, I think people will be afraid to believe that Christian Kirk is still the guy, and, and maybe rightly so. Maybe he's just set to be a two, but he had a really, really good season. You're talking about a wide receiver one finish, 
And while he wasn't very consistent, you're going to you're going to hear that a lot on today's show. He was basically the same uh, as DK Metcalf. But DK Metcalf, I mean, we we just think, wow, he impressed us this year and he's so big and strong and handsome that, uh, you know, he, you know, there's no way you won't draft DK Metcalf high last uh, next year. Christian Kirk proved he is a very solid wide receiver. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, I believe, is better next year than he was this year in year two um, under this system. So Christian Kirk, to me, a great draft pick, a great value, uh, obviously paid dividends next season. I don't think he will skyrocket in the draft season. And, you know, he's probably a wide receiver, too, going forward. I think that's fair. Uh, he's only 26 years old. He had eight touchdowns. That's kind of uh, you can see that dipping, you know, potentially. But sign the big contract, four years, $72 million, was huge for these guys. The first three weeks of the year made a, a quick impression for fantasy players. Uh, you saw Zay Jones have an emergence at one point in time, but it was it was an impressive season. So I, I agree that wide receiver two category is probably right. At 12, Jamar Chase. Not fair. Not fair. Missed some time <laughs> during the year. So, from a fantasy finish standpoint, total points didn't put up enough, yet somehow is still at 12. Consistency ranked, though, number three, he was awesome. I mean, he is a dynamic playmaker, indefensible. Is that even a phrase you can use for, yeah. a, for a wide receiver? I mean, it, it seems undefensible. Like it's in the wrong spot. But, I, I mean, it's a word. You can't but, defend him. But usually it's like... Oh, my actions were indefensible because I did something. The use bad. of that word was indefensible. <laughs> that is, he's also such a true. bad man on the field. It's indefensible. Do you want to know how often Jamar Chase busted this year? Let me let me count them up for you. Yeah, done. Yeah, none. Oh, that's zero. <laughs> zero bust games for Jamar Chase. That's how high I can count. Yeah. So he he was awesome. We'll talk about T. Higgins at the same time. I think there are some discussions to be had here, but Jamar Chase ultimately, when you look at Cooper Cup, Jeff, Justin Jefferson. Like, Jamar Chase belongs in the same stratosphere to me. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, Jamar Chase will most likely be drafted ahead of Cooper Cup next year. I think it'll just be a who do you want, Jamar Chase or Justin Jefferson. He was outlandishly good because Justin Jefferson had a few disappearing acts where he, you know, scored two fantasy points uh, multiple times this last year, even though he was obviously excellent. You never had a bust game here from Jamar Chase, and then you still had the number one overall fantasy finish capabilities. Jamar Chase is obviously just that dude. And then, speaking of T. Higgins, if T. Higgins goes elsewhere, sure. if he has moved, I can't even imagine. I mean, Jamar Chase will be t you know, near the very top of the first round, probably ahead of Justin Jefferson in that situation. I, I think that there is... I would not blame anybody for taking Jamar Chase next year over Justin Jefferson. Strictly on the grounds that Joe Burrow is greater signed Kirk Cousins. Right. You know, he missed – Jamar missed five games. Four due to injury, one due to the deleted game at the end of the year. Uh, and his pace was 124 receptions for almost 1,500 yards, 12 touchdowns, uh, almost 13 touchdowns. So, I think those are uh, – you know, I wouldn't blame anybody for doing that. Yeah, you have like Jamar at third most red zone targets, missed five games. Like he missed four to the injury, then you had the game that got canceled in week seventeen. So to be that far up when when the team, you know, they we you saw the shift. I I don't remember if it was like week five or week six when the Bengals they they looked like they're about to be same old Bengals of let's be the run first team, and then they went very very pass heavy at a neutral script that led to fantastic numbers for both of these wide receivers targeted on 24 and a half percent of his routes that was even better than last year where he was at about 21 percent Jamar Chase is is fantastic but moving the conversation to T Higgins and like we said that we don't count games against players when they miss a game however T Higgins had two games where he was active and destroyed you like you had the week five against Baltimore Played 16% of the snaps or, and left. I mean, left with injury, had absolutely nothing. Week one, he played 26% of the snaps, two catches left with injury. And then week 14, that was the 
the uh, the, the week that we got the news after the fact that that T Higgins was only going to be used as on emergency because they you know prefer not to share that information with fantasy football players and it sucks. But so I mean, there's that's like that's three games. The numbers that T Higgins put up, which is seventy four, a thousand and twenty nine, and seven touchdowns. And he missed the week 17 as well, but he essentially missed three games. Yeah, I mean, Higgins is... So his numbers were great. Higgins was uh, finished at 17, consistency rank of 21. Like you said, I mean, this is two straight years for T. Higgins where he's missed time due to injury now. Um, last season, he finished at 22 at the position. This week he finished, or this year he finished at 17. Uh, he is a very good player, leads the NFL in contested catches since 2020. The storyline with T. Higgins is going to be can the Cincinnati Bengals maneuver in a way that allows them to keep him? Right. Because last year is his final year under contract. And they're going to this have – This year. I thought you said last year. No. I'm yeah, sorry. He, he said last year. Oh, okay. okay. I, I meant the upcoming year. Yes, yes, the, yes. The, the, In the future, not the past. Yes. It will be his final year under contract. He is not a first-round receiver. There's not a fifth-year option for T. Higgins. They're going to have to sign Joe Burrow to fifty to fifty-five million dollars a year. Fifty-five. I'm I'm hoping for the fifty-five. Yeah, I mean, so and, is, so is Joe Burrow. Yeah, and and so there there are some decisions to be made on this Cincinnati roster, and you know, the way I look at it is T. Higgins is a fantastic wide receiver. We know that the wide receiver market this off season in the free in free agency is very. Bland, very shallow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Juju is the headliner, and we don't have a thousand yard receiver in the free agent class. And he was hurt, and maybe he would have hit it. But you know, Jacoby Myers is another name. DJ Chark. Yeah. So this is not a headliner class. And then next year, you know, unless Mike Evans is out there, which he'll be older, like T. Higgins reasonably could be the best name in the free agent class next season or next off season. And I don't know his mindset when it comes to re-signing in Cincinnati. But I don't think Cincinnati can pay him what another team can pay him. So something has to happen there. Um, it does not seem like he wants to give a hometown discount. And, and I don't necessarily blame him. I would love for him to stay in Cincinnati and have this offense just keep clicking. Uh, we know he can get it done. The, I think the question then about T. Higgins is if he were to leave, either by trade this offseason or free agency the following season, is he – a Stephon Diggs, A.J. Brown level talent where when he leaves, he becomes absolutely elite, helps the new team. You know, we've seen some of these elite. We we knew Tyree Kill was elite when, when he changed teams. But when right. it came to, comes to like Diggs and A.J. Brown, they were great. Diggs and A.J. Brown, they were great wide receivers who hadn't really crossed to the threshold of super duper star right and that's where t higgins is so if he were to get the opportunity and just to give you some frame of reference here i, I took out those three injured games oh right on uh just to see it's not fair because fantasy players played him in those games but in the games that he played full allotment of snaps he would have had our consistency score of wide receiver 12 um so do you guys believe that he can be a super duper star in another location as the one no. No, I don't think he could be a super duper star. I think he's a really good player. Mike, I think I think he's great. I think that I think he can go to a different team and be a number 1 where I don't think he's Diggs and AJ Brown. We've, and I don't think he'll evolve into that. I mean, he's playing with Joe Burrow right now. Sure. And but, some of that consistency, you miss four games due to Jamar Chase being out, which presumably he'd go somewhere and be the one, but I'd say like at least we've seen, you know, this this past year where weeks 11 and 12 Jamar Chase missed those two games. T. Higgins, wide receiver four, wide receiver six. And so the, we we at least have a small sample size of when T. Higgins is left as the guy. I mean, he's been able to come through more often than not. He, it's just really hard. It's hard sure. to be A.J. Brown. It's hard to be Tyreek Hill, Stephon Diggs. Doesn't mean you're bad. Well, it's eight, like, Could he be a wide receiver one? Of course. Well, it's interesting. The, the A.J. Brown discussion I think is is interesting on its own of like yeah he came in was that dude right away but Devonta Smith was had an incredible sophomore season so I mean that was that's part of the store of AJ Brown's story of he had another player on the other side of the field who was fantastic to help him out true yeah that that's a 
it's a gamble when you don't know if the guy can, yeah, you know, perform without. I mean, Jamar Chase on the other side and Joe Burrow quarterback are some advantages. Let's put it that way. And the team that generally pays the big, 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 big money is not necessarily the team you want it to be. It's yeah. It's, I mean, I think of the Bears, right? Uh, they've got Justin Fields. They need. They got a, their guy. <laughs> they got their they, guy. They traded the 32nd overall pick. Chase is on the case. Oh, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> Don't remind people about that. That's unfair. We, we have to. Oh. Now, he could just play under his contract now, though, right? Yeah, he, he I think that's what will happen. Season. The Bears might be saving money in this equation. <laughs> had he done something to flash, they would have had to extend it. Sure. Now they can say, you didn't show up yet. Like, yeah, you he, didn't get off the plane. Sir, we traded the 32nd overall pick for you. We need more than 15 yards. Yeah. So we'll see. The Higgins story will be interesting. Um, I don't have any indication. I don't know if you guys do that. They'd move him this off season, but no, I, he'll play out his contract. That's what I think. Uh, all right, quick break, and then we are back with some Seahawks wide receivers. <laughs> All right, Tyler Lockett at 13 on the year, drafted as the wide receiver 43. DK Metcalf at 18, drafted as the wide receiver 20. I do remember having the brief moment on the show last offseason where I said, are we going to come back here Yep. on this show and just be shaking our heads going, we're stupid because Tyler Lockett is that good. And here we are. Stupid. Tyler Lockett was <laughs> so good. DK Metcalf was so good. So let me ask you a, a question. I know this is the truth about wide receivers episode, but was Geno Smith great or was this Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf and that's why Geno Smith was a very serviceable, above average quarterback this year? Was it Geno or was it these guys? It was. It was both. I that, don't think you can. That wasn't one of the options. <laughs> no, that's the only option I'm going to answer with. I mean, when you come into a situation, like everybody thought Ross was getting an upgrade in situation. He wasn't. Yep. Um, and Gino got the best possible pair of weapons he could have had to succeed in this offense. Lockett had a consistency rank of 10. So 56% of the time he had a good game, 13% great, 19% bust. Metcalf had a consistency rank of 17, 6% great, 47% good, 35% bust. Uh, you know, Metcalf's big story was he only had six touchdowns because he had more receptions and more yards than Tyler Lockett did. It just ended up in that weird situation where, like I'm looking at these numbers and I'm not even trusting myself because I felt like every time I watched the Seahawks game, Geno Smith would just target DK Metcalf in the end zone 50 times. Yeah, but it, it wasn't uh, – I mean, obviously, D.K. Metcalf, a great talent. But Tyler Lockett, really, I, th I think is what made that offense move and work, the, the offensive scheme that they run. Tyler Lockett was absolutely unbelievable, and he was very, very consistent. In fact, his worst game of the season was a game in which he only played 30% of snaps after he broke his hand. And, you know, I don't, I don't think many players were playing him. Like, that one – you know, could have been a legitimate. We should have taken it out anyways because, you know, fantasy managers weren't playing him in that week 17 matchup with the broken hand. He was just outrageously consistent, so good, had ceilings, had a good floor, and going forward, I mean, I I think he's going to be the better value because DK Metcalf will be drafted ahead of Tyler Lock. I will take – if I if it's not value-based, I will draft DK Metcalf ahead yeah, of him. Yeah, and every – More targets, more receptions, bigger – I mean, better odds of scoring more touchdowns. Sure. Everyone will take DK Metcalf ahead, and I think Tyler Lockett will be a really, really good value next now, year. Now, he'll be uh, year 31 season for Lockett next year. Yeah. I, so, I mean, there's – there's Man, his speed. You know, <laughs> when you've got someone like Deshaun Jackson, the the speed and – they don't take a lot of hits. You know, you don't see Tyler Lockett usually getting blown oh, up. Oh, he, because he, he catches and he's like – no, thank you. Yes. He's the Peyton Manning. I, I, I love it. Yes. It, <laughs> yes, it's very Peyton Manning. He's like he's he caught the ball. He's like, I I got what I needed. It, I'm going down. It doesn't get enough credit. The the combination of being a fearless NFL player who also completely protects themselves. In Darren Sproles retirement 
speech, or he wrote a big retirement yes. letter. He talked about people always ask him, how did he do this at his size? And he's like, he avoids contact. He's like, that's that was like my main thing was I made sure to avoid contact, go down on my own. Like, and that's what Tyler Lockett does. So I'm I'm not that worried about his age 31 uh, season. He hasn't lost any, anything on film. I don't think you, he's losing his speed at 31, and he doesn't take damage very often. Well, I mean, you talk about I mean, he's he's 5'10", 180, so he better not. He better not take a lot of damage. It's a lesson for the undersized wide receivers coming into the league. I mean, you you look at some of these rookies last year, there were some concussions across the board. I mean, Olave got popped twice. You've got some smaller uh, rookies coming out. This is the script to follow. Be so, a dynamic deep threat, develop your route tree, and be a first down guy. So uh, the, to the conversation of was it Geno, was it the wide receivers, and I agree, it, it, it's, it was just a perfect storm of both of them, but looking at some of the, the premium – pro football focus numbers Geno Smith had just like an outrageously good season he looks like he is uh fourth in in deep ball adjusted percent of uh, uh, adjusted completion percent so you know like the pass that should have been caught at basically 53 percent while having a huge percent of of what they call a big time throw which is a pass with excellent location and timing and it's generally further down the field like Geno was extremely accurate. I mean, it, it just way better than anyone could have ever possibly imagined. So I do think it's a combination of both. And you can look at the, the actual analytics of Geno Smith and you're like, yeah, this guy was incredible going down the field. And not, not just because he's getting helped by two elite wide receivers. It's, no, he was doing the right thing. And he's got to get paid now, right? Yes. Okay. He does. They have to figure that out, which I, I think he, I think he's back in Seattle. I think he gets a good contract. It won't be, Joe Burrow's contract, but I mean, at the oh, age man. of Gino, it, it shouldn't be. If Gino goes somewhere in free agency, which I don't think will happen, but if he did, and whoever uh, quarterback D Drew Locke is their starter next year, we get to have we would get to have all the same conversations, <laughs> and then find out like, oh man, Drew Locke career oh. year. Mo most of the I will bet against Drew Locke. Most of the offseason discussion, to be fair, was about Drew Locke being their quarterback. Yeah, it we was, weren't it wasn't, we weren't talking Geno early. Wasn't until preseason that it really seemed to be clicking that Geno was going to hold on to that job. You see, Geno put up a uh, five touchdown performance. What in, in the, the flag football game? Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. Well, gr elite weapons again, yes. right? Terry McLaurin at fourteen. It's never him. <laughs> All right, Terry McLaurin, Commanders wide receiver, twenty-seven oh, years man. old, drafted at wide receiver fifteen. Finished at 14 hey, with, hey, hey. with a consistency rank of 14. Let's go, Terry. That has to be his highest finish ever. Yes, um, it was. It was a, It was a weird year for the commanders in general, the quarterback position. 47% good game, 6% great, 29% bust. It was really nice with Taylor Heineke, I would say, week 7 through 13-ish. I mean, I don't know how to feel about Terry McLaurin. I think we all agree he's a good wide receiver, but you know where, where this team is headed. I'm not sure this. I think this might be the ceiling of what you could get. Jahan Dotson's a really good player. Missed extended periods of time. Can Terry McLaurin beat out a four, uh, wide receiver 14 finish? I that's pr unfortunately it's probably the ceiling. I think the player Terry McLaurin could. I put him as. I don't know if I'll go a great but very 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 good the, the 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 stat that is a highlight for me is Terry McLaurin has played four years in the NFL and has already played with eight different starting quarterbacks like that is an absolute travesty for for someone whose skill level is of Terry McLaurin's that you have to deal with this crap each and every year and Andy you are correct of what it well what is next year more of the same, more than more of the same bull crap that Terry McLaurin's going to have to deal with. So that it, he is, I don't, I, I don't blame him for the the ups, the ebbs and the flows of of his game log because you've seen what happens when when you have a quarterback that comes when when uh, it, he gets a hyper target, like he gets a real, he gets the target share that a top tier wide receiver should get. He performs. He gives you good fantasy numbers. But then you get guys like Carson Wentz who are like, no, nah, I don't want to throw to that guy. I'm just going to do something else, and it's ridiculous. 
Yeah, I, mean, I think that's always going to be his story. Yes. You could have Sam Howell come in, though, and he's the best Howell. of all of them. And then uh, maybe Terry McLaurin has the best year of his career because he's got the best quarterback of his career. Howell played the last week, right? Uh, I believe he did. How did uh, Terry McLaurin Wide do that last week? Wide receiver 11, baby. 100% <laughs> of games with Sam Howell. He is a wide receiver one so far. That is just a fact. It's not an opinion. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Sam Howell's you're my guy? Yeah, probably. Put it on the board. Uh, <laughs> you could howl a lot. Oh, yeah. that'd be a lot of fun. That'd be a lot of fun. How I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to do that every yeah. touchdown he throws. Yeah, what would you do? That would be fun. Yeah. That would I mean, be good. I mean, was, what if the whole state yeah, got in say, on that? Washington, I, I don't recall. Were, did people do that on the touchdown? Because if you didn't, shame on you. Yeah, look at look at yourself in the mirror and say, yeah. I was at that game, and I let I let my city and my country down. Because <laughs> I didn't howl. Yes. At the moon. Uh, you didn't howl for Howell. Brandon Ayuk was 15, number 15 overall. Oh, it didn't feel like it. Debo was 37. <laughs> oh, it felt like it. Consistency rank was better for Debo, 23rd, 30th for Brandon Ayuk. Uh, I agree with Jason's sentiment. Some of it was I played 17 games as part of the resume for Brandon Ayuk this year. 78 for uh, 1,015 yards, eight touchdowns, 29% good games. That tells you the story. That's how it felt. Mm -hmm. And then Debo was at 38%, but he didn't play as many. So... You he know, still wasn't even on pace. I don't think there's any way that Debo's getting drafted behind Brandon Ayuk next year just because of this fantasy finish. No, Debo's the more talented player. He's uh, more predominant in the offense. But I do believe that what this what this kind of shows, especially in the Christian McCaffrey version of the San Francisco 49ers, is I I don't really love going after this wide receiver core. I, I this is a run first team, and I think that even when you have Brandon Ayuk finish as the wide receiver fifteen, you you would think, oh, fantastic! You got more bust games than good games, a and this was probably Ayuk's best fantasy finish. I don't think he's going to be higher than wide receiver fifteen. Certainly not this year. Maybe never again. So the San Francisco Forty Nine ers receiving situation is just one that I d I want to I want to invest in the running backs here maybe the mobile quarterback and Trey Lance but the wide receivers I I just the, the consistency is going to let you down they don't throw enough and have enough total volume to have multiple good options have consistency and 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 the the suckiest part is they're great because of it like in in NFL terms okay you want to take Debo out we've got Ayuk you want to try to take both of them out we've got Kittle the offense clicks and is awesome, but for fantasy purposes, it's going to be a, a really ugly, bumpy ride. It's going to be the Matterhorn where your neck is just getting whipped left and right. Gotcha. It's like, oh, this is, but it's a great ride. It's a classic. Right. This team is great. Yeah, it is. But yeah, it's but not at the end of the Matterhorn, are you happy you went on it? No, I'm not happy I went on it. You still do it, though? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. I Look, Debo, if, if he had played a full season, he would have been in the – you know, upper echelon of consistency. It wasn't as good of a year as last but, year, but at least you know the ceiling is number two. But the, I'm saying the looking at it, just, just a quick, this is the 17-game pace. It doesn't factor in, you know, he left this game because of injury. Just his his game log, 73 for 826 and uh, 2.6 touchdowns. So, I mean, it's like I I have some concerns here. It will about be about draft Debo price Samuel. for Debo to me. Yeah, but I just uh, – it's. I think it is a fair question to ask. Was that was the wide receiver two finish? It, it, you can say that. Well, I, I know Debo's got that ceiling, but was that just was that just a complete outlier? That's Debo's best season by far, and he won't come anywhere close to that. I think that's a fair question to ask. Yeah, I mean that might be his career high, his best season, but he's also got a season better than this one in him. Where yes, he missed yeah, four but, four games. But I'm saying between the two of them, like. Brandon Ayuk will be turning 25 pretty soon, and like just he looks like his trajectory of his career is still going up. If you have to pay what, close to what you had to pay for Debo last year, we won't need to have this discussion because he won't be on our team. Like right. I, I agree with the neck whipping problems, but look, I'm willing to go on that ride at a discount. If you okay, got, you got like Jason, a fast pass. Jason, you go on it anyways. If you can get me into the park, 
on the cheap. So I, I got to pay. <laughs> So I, got, I gotta pay your way in, yeah. All right, oh, behind the, the curtain oh, time. Dang, so, so when we came in here pre, pre having a bite of mucus or whatever Jason did, we realized that he had gotten a new mute button here in the studio. Yes, well, the, well, if you have been with us this off season, you, you were a part of the show where uh, mm-hmm. I, I slurped into the mute button and the mute button didn't work, so they replaced the mute button. That's great. Yeah, they they are not all here now. Uh, Al Borland's been on a cruise for six weeks. <laughs> And um, so the new mute button came in, but it's inverse. Okay, it's you hold to talk, and you well, you know you talk you toggle it on it's got to a, talk. It's and got a on. toggle switch right now, which mm-hmm. it doesn't normally. It's so, so important. If you push it in, it doesn't automatically it come out. <laughs> and based on the beginning of this show, I'm guessing you've been utilizing it quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you just now forgot to toggle it back into the yeah, talk position. Mistakes were made. Okay, okay, we're here. <laughs> mistake started with the mucus sandwich this shows a lot <laughs> this shows a lot like uh what they say the matterhorn yeah it's where a your lot neck of is getting whipped around oh boy buccaneers wide receiver time. oh boy mike evans was uh <laughs> somehow the wide receiver 16 but felt like his consistency score well which, that's gotta... which was 36 Oof, duh. also known as 55th <laughs> In the second half of the year, if you're used to our consistency charts and you look at week nine through week 16, you will vomit. Like that's There's a disclaimer on the website because the color combination is so ghastly that you will lose your lunch. And then Godwin came in at 20, but his consistency rank was 20. And in the second half, it was six. Like there is no debate that Godwin was a million times better to have on your fantasy roster over the second half of the year. And I would say going forward. Yeah. I mean, we got to find out who the quarterback is going to be uh, for the Buccaneers. I could also see Mike Evans being one of those great elite wide receivers that gets traded. There's been, you know, some rumors there of uh, more speculation than, than any kind of substantiated Well, he'll be a free rumors. agent after next year. So. Yeah, so if they want to capitalize on him, they know that they're not going to have a great offense this year. And he is still a guy that if you are looking to build up your young quarterback and, and try to find your A.J. Brown, your Stephon Diggs, I would go after Mike Evans. He's still got a lot to give. This last year, 1,124 yards. Uh, you know, he he had a pretty good season. He just didn't get touchdowns until they all came in one game in week 17. Thank you, Mike, um, uh, on, yes. for that one. It was delightful. It I was mean, great. Just to be – like he was a disaster for your drafts because you sure. drafted him as the wide receiver nine, and do you know how many times he finished at that level or above? It was two times. One one was in week uh, four, and one was the final week of the year when you were already crying – or in your guys' case, oh, we were crying. chucking him into your lineup. Mm-hmm. Tears of joy. So it, it, it just didn't – he didn't deliver on draft value, not even close. Neither did Godwin. Because uh, Godwin, you had to wait – to get the good, good-ish good second half, you had to wade through yes. a rough first half. What? Is, who plays quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Because that's my starting point for the conversation. Looking at – and – it, I just pulled some numbers real quick for – so two years ago, uh, Tom Brady, his adjusted uh, uh, deep ball completion percentage was sitting at about 48%, like in a, a fantastic year. That dropped by 10 percentage points heading into this year. And so when, when you felt all those really bad Mike Evans weeks and you would look and you'd see them going through the highlights and the lowlights of Mike Evans breaking free – Tom Brady missing Mike Evans, it's reflected in the numbers. Like Brady was not good going down the field this year. So and now with the retirement, I mean they are gonna they're up against it, man. Of uh, and that's why I think you're talking about do they trade? Do they just, do they have to blow up the situation and start rebuilding? I uh, I assume based on what Todd Bowles has done, which is retain his job and fire everyone. He's wanting to win now. He wants to keep his job, and they need to win this next year. They're not going to be able to rebuild and have Todd Bowles stay there. So I imagine they're going to go after someone like Jimmy Garoppolo or uh, you know, someone on the open market and try to say, hey, we've got 
We've got a team that just won a Super Bowl a couple years ago come in and, and be the next Brady. Mike, would you rather go on the the Buccaneer wide receiver ride or the 49er wide receiver ride? Ooh. You're entering the park. You know both of them are going to do some right. damage to the old body. I mean, I still have the unknown information of the quarterback. Correct. But let's let's pretend it peaks at Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. Because I think it peaks at Jimmy Garoppolo. Sure. And it's like... Uh, as a consolation prize, like the Jim, the Jimmy Garoppolo going there is not the worst thing in the world that could happen. I think I would. Oh man, I think I'd still go with the Bucks. I think just the, the the talent of Chris Godwin got better as the year went along. He's still next year. He'll be the full. Uh, he'll have the full recovery time from the ACL tear. That I think. I think he's back on track. Mike Evans might be slowing down a little bit, but I also think that Mike Evans is. I think his season. Should have been a lot better. Garrett Wilson's at 19. Oh, baby. The best rookie wide receiver that we saw last year, Garrett Wilson, you know, every game, even when he didn't deliver for fantasy, you watched him play football. You heard him talk in the locker room. Like, this is a guy that wants to win. He's 22 years old and was a huge value in drafts. Drafted at wide receiver 51, finished at 19, consistency of 29. That was a huge problem. Better in the second half of the year, which is kind of normal for rookies. Uh, fewer games with Zach Wilson in the second half of the year. And fewer in the future, I think. I mean, every all the talk out of New York right now is that Zach Wilson is going to not be traded, but they hope might develop in a backup role. Yeah. What? I, I mean, the, the team has come out and said that they would love to acquire Aaron Rodgers. The, the, you know, the situation that, Garrett Wilson found himself in this year was being an unbelievably great wide receiver when Zach Wilson was not on the field. He went from six targets a game with Zach Wilson to 11 targets a game without him. Uh, three receptions to six receptions, 50 yards to 82 yards. He was a fantasy points per game, 14.2 when Zach Wilson wasn't on the field. That's in his rookie season, and that's not with great quarterback play. That's just with Better than better, terrible. Exactly. 187 so, target pace without Zach Wilson. You're, you're talking about a bona fide superstar going forward if they can figure out the quarterback position, which isn't that easy. But even if they don't figure it out to the level of like, okay, Aaron Rodgers is coming in or, or Derek Carr is coming in, if they you know, go back next year with Mike White, I'm I, I'm happy. I'm still drafting Garrett Wilson wherever he is at ADP. Because is he I a think, top 12 wide receiver next year? I mean, like, you're talking about mm. finishing at 19 as a rookie. If you if you say no Zach Wilson, you know, he had 147 targets as a rookie. Yeah, I, I think he I think lean, he catches 100-plus passes. I lean yes, but it's it's just it's a slight. It's just one cheek is up, and i am kind of got my head bobbed to the side. Is that what – that's what a slight for you is? Yeah, like when you you're – You get up on one cheek. When you're leaning in, the, when you're leaning in your chair. You don't, you're not raising one cheek in the air? I think so, but I'm not getting it all the way off the chair. Yeah, it's just slightly. Oh, okay. Jason's trying it out. <laughs> yeah. It's, Everyone it's, at home, try to, how do you lean in your chair? I mean, my, my, my cheek You get a butt cheek planted. in the ground? Yeah, both, both if butt cheeks. You, you, you just bend in the, in the torso. Yeah, it's just a torso lean. I don't do a lot of it because then the microphone goes way over <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you just got to pull the mic with you. Here's some quick, uh, quick final mentions. Oh, uh, no, don't worry about it. We built this pity. Oh, man. Michael Pittman comes in at 23, consistency of 28. Um, oh, gosh. I don't know if you still got that. If you want to hit any of the music, please. Brooksy. Do we have it? Don't you remember? We built this city. I mean, it wasn't good enough. No. Wasn't good enough for Mike Williams. Missed a ton of time. Did they hire Jeff Saturday yet? Have, did, have they done that? Uh, the latest reports are that they are down to one final candidate, but we don't know exactly who it is. I <laughs> wait. That means they have a coach. <laughs> if you're down to what one candidate, we, you have a coach. We've got to narrow down to this one particular person. <laughs> I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be <laughs> Shane Steichen, um, who I don't know if they can officially hire him yet. We've narrowed. Oh, okay. No, they couldn't. They couldn't hire him. Yeah. So that's that's the that's presumption. the report. That was the report. That's. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Look, Mike Williams. We've narrowed it from two to one, but we're not going to tell you which one. Mike Williams' consistency rank was 13. That's the highlight from that story. If you want to look positively, if Keenan departs, Mike Williams just got paid 
Still oh, had 93 gonna, targets we are in 13 be weeks. We're going to be back in on Mike Williams next year. Should we? Probably, yeah. I mean, Mike Williams was not – Mike Williams came out and in week one was so – bad that it felt like a loss he wasn't that bad you just talked you know about how our much crap metric. i got in week one <laughs> i i you know I mean, it was and a how thursday much, night football game wasn't it and how it was much some kind of glory high, yeah. mike got for michael Pittman. Yeah. i mean those guys had opposite week ones we've got to remember and then opposite season <laughs> yeah mike williams was actually pretty good obviously the injury in the middle of the year is what really derailed mike williams from being able to be a very good fantasy pick because he had a ton of great finishes. Wide receiver 8, 13, 9, 6, 5, and in unlimited games. So if Keenan Allen is gone, Mike Williams will be someone that, yeah, you should draft. I feel like he'd, yeah. I feel like he would, he would rather have Keenan on the field. Keenan, well, I mean, uh, wide receiver 8, 13, yeah, yeah. 9, th uh, those were games that Keenan wasn't That's on the field. Sure. Yeah, Keenan's, uh, he missed a ton of time, which is something he hadn't done in a while. Consistency rake was six because when he came back and played, peppered with targets. Yeah, he's just a stud wide receiver too. So uh, that was the story of the Charger wideouts, Packers wide receivers. You know, let's not forget what Christian Watson did in the middle of the year. His second half consistency rank was 10. I mean, if you had, if you had drafted both Lazard and Watson and then just made the flip for at your, week 10 for your starting roster at the right time you would have had a really really good wide receiver because in the first half Alan Lazard was the consistency rank of 10 and Christian Watson in the second half was a consistency rank of 10 that's I mean it really sums up two it took two to become Devonte. yes in a way and uh we don't know if Aaron Rodgers will be back I'm starting to believe he won't be more and more man but dude I can't get in that guy's head I mean I, was, I know he won a pro am. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah congrats. Nice. I was gonna when we were talking Garrett Wilson. I was gonna ask the question. So I'll I'll do it now that we we're, we're on Aaron Rodgers because the the rumor mill right now is pretty heavy Jets and Raiders. And let's say you're Aaron Rodgers. What we know about him as as a guy, which he's a new, unique cat. Because sometimes it seems like he's a little vengeful. You feel like he'd rather go to Vegas. And play with that team, be back with Devontae Adams, or go to the New York Jets knowing that he gets to take the job from the second overall pick who is still on his rookie contract. That that doesn't I don't think that is You don't think that feels good to Aaron Rodgers? To I be don't think, old man old man gets to go take the young guy's job? No, because Mike White took his job. I mean, I don't. He's actually I, taking Mike White's job. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's he's, not so great of a. He's taking an undrafted guy's job. I the job's rather, already been taken. I think you'd rather. I think you'd rather. Oh man, that's tough. I think you'd rather live in New York. I think you'd rather throw the football to Devonte Adams. Um, I'm guessing he would rather not be in Mahomes' division, but then you're in Josh's Josh Allen's division. Yeah, I think he might. Retire. <laughs> Just kidding. Tom Brady retired. He can't. Yeah. He's got a no trade clause, right? He has to approve any. No, trade. he does not. This new when they renegotiated Rogers does not. When they renegotiated this last little extension that came out, he used to have one. Yeah, you're right. No, no trade clause. Guess we'll find out. Man, can't like wait for him to be the centerpiece of another off season. He's not even good enough to be the centerpiece. <laughs> well, not last year. I know. All right, the truth of the tight end position and a rookie review show coming up. It's going to be fun. Super Bowl coming up as well. Well, we'll nail down this transportation situation. We'll get Maybe there. skateboard. Maybe we skateboard there. Ooh. Do we just go now? Do you know how to oh, skateboard? Oh, we could go. Oh, we'll go camp? Just go put up some tents. That way we're already there. I don't want to miss it. It's pretty uh, temperate out here. Pretty nice it in is. Arizona. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. I'll see you there. <laughs> where's my <laughs> yeah he just comes rolling in in his limousine yeah. yes all right uh yeah the tight end show should be pretty interesting don't skip it uh mark andrews evan ingram some storylines over the season tj hawkinson's path forward Taysom hill mike's favorite player of course we'll talk about them all on the tight end truth yes. episode yes. tight end Taysom hill tight end <laughs> Taysom hill that is it for today's show thank you for joining us make sure you follow the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. Thanks. Tell your friends. Goodbye. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.